Hey folks, y'all been asking for it, so we're going to deliver it. A side-by-side -side comparison of the Butterpat, Stargazer, Field, and Lodge skillets. Stick around, you don't want to miss this, and I promise you. Welcome to the barn, and I've got my beautiful wife with me again today. I'm a blessed man, I guarantee you. Something I want to say before we go on any further is I thank you so much, all of you, for your concern about my mustache. Take a good look here. It is coming back. I mean, Bertha got it, uh, and it's on its way back, so give me a little time. It will get there. We've been doing a short cast iron sear series. As we have promised, Yes. we are doing a side-by-side -side comparison of some major USA-made cast iron brands. Butter Pat. Yep. Field, Stargazer, and Lodge. We did contact Butter Pat, Field, and Stargazer and asked them if they would provide us a skillet, and they were very generous to do yes. so. We're not being paid by those companies to promote or say anything about their products, but they did provide the skillets for an honest review. For the Lodge skillet, we just went and purchased one. The categories that we were comparing these skillets in are weight, seasoning and finish, handle design, overall design, and finally price. There you go. You now, ready? Yes, we are. Much anticipated episode. I've been waiting for weeks for this. This lodge, they're calling this their 10.25 skillet. Um, however, all of these skillets have about an eight and a half yep. inch cooking surface. Lodge's weight is five pounds, 6.4 ounces. And this does come in as our heaviest skillet. Yep. So um, the next one we're going to talk about is a big one in cast iron. Who it is that? It is the seasoning and the finish. The lodge that I have, and I have a lot of it, it is a pre-seasoned base. Sure, it's blacker than any of these other skillets. It's got that nice black color. But let me tell you folks, this is like a truck bed liner when you run across here. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer, just me, you have to start with a smooth surface to end up with a smooth surface. Now, I've always just took orbital sander and 60 grit paper and got down to the smooth and then yep. started over. How do you feel that over time it builds and accepts seasoning? Well, I've, I've sanded a piece down and started over yep. and, and it finishes back pretty quick, but it is definitely a whole lot easier to clean after I did away with their pre-seasoning and started with a slick finish. If anyone is interested in the way that we smooth and then rebuild that seasoning, we'll put a link below. It's a free guide that we've created and it's pretty easy to follow if you do have lodge or are interested in buying some lodge. So yeah. next we're gonna talk about the Stargazer seasoning and finish. Well, as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I seen that good slick finish and it had a good bronze color to it. Mm -hmm. And we fried a little bacon, as y'all seen, and then we scrambled an egg in there. I was impressed with this skillet in the way that it accepted the seasoning that we put back on it and the way it performed with what they already had on it. And I even think that we maybe felt it cleaned up a yeah, little bit cleaned better a little easier. than the other skillets did. They do sell this seasoned and, and unseasoned. Eight, There's eight, an dollar, dollar difference. eight dollar difference. We recommend go ahead and go with their seasoning. They've already started it for you and it was a really good seasoning. Yes. When you run your cross, your hand across this and a hand across this, you, well, you I mean, you difference. can, you can hear it folks. Hear this. There is a difference. Yeah. Uh, Sugar. Field skillet. And I do have to say, um, from our unboxing, my favorite seasoning was on the field. I would say the stargazer, the field and the butter pat all had equal yes. smoothness. But to me, the field had a hand finished feel to it. And I ran my finger across it and I could see my fingerprint and the oil come through and it felt like somebody had personally oiled right and seasoned the skillet right yeah. before it got here. The thing that I really liked about it as well as the stargazer and the butter pat too, it had the feel of old iron of Wagner and Griswold. Yes, the butter pat. Butter pat. And, um, so the thing that was unique about Butter Pat I saw was that because it's the only one that it's hand finished, yeah. um, there are none of those swirl marks that you can see on all of them. Or feel. And feel. This one was just like whew, wax car. Yeah. I mean, it was slick, slick finish. Yeah. We're going to talk about the handle design because mm -hmm. all of them, that is kind of where they are all differentiated. Yes, it is. Handle. And, uh, and we'll start back here with Lodge. 
That is about four, a four and, and three quarters. Yeah, four and three quarters Inch. inches. When I when I grab a hold of this, it's automatically here. This short handle too is going to make this skillet seem a little heavier when it's a shorter piece of leverage that you're trying to pick up. It feels good in my hand. Um, it's heavy, but I do like. That those, it's just a classic design yeah. and it feels good and and maybe it's because we I've cooked with Lodge quite a bit. Yeah, and the Griswolds get, and the Wagners were sort of that thing. They all kind of have the same yeah. design. This is Stargazer from the skillet down. This is seven and a half inches. So you gained three inches. You gained a lot. Okay. Now when I first seen this, my automatic thought and y'all y'all heard me say it, this is for a cooling design. But also, folks, there is one other feature that they have here that I overlooked. You can lay a spatula or a wooden spoon yeah. right here. The more I used it, the more I picked it up, I got to sort of thinking, hey, this thing is all right. It does have the longer handle. It is cooler. I can grab it barehanded. We have noted, like when we did cook with it, it took a lot longer for this handle to get yeah. hot while cooking. So that was a big advantage. Yeah. Um, for me, however, I don't like the handle. I have a smaller hand. Um, it's a little too wide and um, it just doesn't feel, cause then I have to grip it so hard. It's this edge here edge. starts cutting into my hand. You do have this on a campfire and stick it there. You're further away yeah. from the actual fire. So. I ain't burning the hair off your knuckles. Next is the field. The field. And Five a and half. a half. I... This feels good. Yeah. Um, it has a little more roll to it, which makes it a little easier to grab a hold of big hands or little. Does it feel good in your hand? Oh, cast iron feels good in my hand all the time, but I, I do like the way this skillet feels. It is longer than the lodge, this yes. one is. so. It also has just a flat yeah. coming out, and so and maybe that does help yeah. with my hand. The butter pat. Yes. About a f four and four five eighths. Four and five eighths, maybe. Yeah, I was close. It doesn't feel as good as the lodge or the um, field. And why is that? This cuts into me here, this design. With not being a solid Without handle. Without being solid or being maybe a little more rounded. To me, it feels pretty similar to the old handles that were on the Griswold and stuff. It's just this edge, it's a little, if it was little rolled sharp. down just a little. Overall, my completely favorite handle is the field. Really? Yeah, but I do. You give me more time to use this one. You probably grow onto that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cause it, and, and that gives me a little more room, you know. I would say my favorite is either the lodge or the field. The only reason I would lean toward the field is because it is a lighter skillet, and so I don't have as much weight holding me down. Let's talk about the overall design of these skillets. And since... Uh, we kind of we kind of did a little. We did the magic shell game. Mix around, but yeah. let's go ahead and start with field. The thickness of the wall reminded me so much of Griswold Wagner Ware. It has no pour spout, but it's flared mm -hmm. enough that I have poured gravy from any direction in the world. Yeah. Sometimes when you just have a flared edge on these and you go to pouring gravy across a chicken fried steak that beat Bobby Flay's butt, it's going to drip down the pan. What I liked the most about the field is it was very, very simple design. Yeah. Um, straight handle, a nice thin wall. Uh, Stargazer next. Okay. This is probably the most unique skillet. Mm -hmm. I like that you can put your whole hand through it. I don't no. know why. It's not like I'm walking around with like. You to the carry store that through the skillet, airport. Airport, no I mean. But I just like that it's there and that if yeah. you wanted to do it, you could. I do like that it has a more rolled, flared out edge. Um, versus the other ones. But like I said, for me, I just, the, the handle's not my friend. Here's the other thing too. This is the deepest of the skillets. Yes. Like a two and a quarter depth. Field is one and three fourths. Lodge is nearly two. And butter pat is just over one and a half maybe. Lodge does have a pore spout, yep. which I like. It's, it's little. Um, I would have liked to see that more pronounced. The wall, however, is significantly thicker than the other ones. Yes. Um, that will go into the weight factor, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which I don't like. But I did like the handle. It's just a classic handle. If it was a little longer, it would be It'd a be good, good deal. Yeah. It would. And now we'll finish off overall design with the butter pat. Um, the, the thing I love the best is the thin wall. Yeah. And then also the pour spout. It has the most pronounced pour spout, which I do like. This is kind of a little unique design for them. It's different than anything we've seen, mm -hmm. um, but it does give you a little. Yeah, you got a leverage, leverage point. Um, 
The handle's not my favorite. It Actually, the longer I hold it, it does start hurting. I don't feel like it's very ergonomic. Um, That's a big word. That's a big word. I really like these poor spouts. Yep. I really did. I like the way the design of the skillet would. I'd roll the edges just a little. To me, this is a this is a skillet that, hey, it's user friendly yeah, to, to nearly is. everybody. How much will it affect your wallet or the credit card? Yes. yes. But one thing about cast iron, when you buy good quality cast iron, it is an investment. Every time you cook out of it, it's giving you something back. The Lodge, now I picked this up at Walmart, I told you, and it was $20. The Stargazer, it comes in two, two styles. Like we said, unseasoned, it's $80. Seasoned, it's $88. But they also have a military discount. Yes, so if you go on their website, they do offer a 15% discount field and their skillet is $100. Yeah, but they do have a 15% off now going oh, on. Oh, do right. they? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Their promotions may change, yeah. so Be check sure their check website out. or contact them. Um, I think I did see maybe that if you sign up for the Lodge email, you do get a coupon. All right. So you could check that. Um, and then finally, Butter Pat is $195. So let's just go through and do a quick kind of pros and cons. Pros and cons. To, to each skillet. When Lodge changed and went to the pre-seasoning that they do now, to me, it didn't do anything but create me more work to get what I was after. Yes. Now, the old Lodge that I have, I wouldn't take nothing for it. It has served me well. The biggest con to Lodge is the, pre, the rough pre-seasoning and its weight. Yeah. The pros to Lodge, Cheaper. It's, it's inexpensive, it's available nearly everywhere. everywhere. They have different sizes. Lodge is the only company currently making quality American made cast iron Dutch ovens. So if you're looking for that, we do recommend their Dutch ovens. The only thing that I really disliked about this skillet, and it's very little, was I might have squeezed this handle in just a tad, yeah. you know, and it, it would have made it a little easier. I like that it's cooler. You know, I, I love the design. I like the flare on the lid. Yeah. Uh, it, it does feels... pour a little better than the field. The thing I really love about this skillet is its weight and its finish. But I could take my finger and rub across there and I knew that this skillet was going to finish well. It was going to perform well, clean well. I would have liked to have seen a pour spout on here. They just kept it real simple. Um, the, this handle does feel really good to me. The butter pat. And no. I'm just going to say it right out of the gate. The biggest con to this one, it's its price. But you do have to remember that it is completely handmade. Yeah. This to me would be something that a collector, an aficionado would have, right? Whoa. Like, it's such a, a classic piece of, of American cast iron. Um, I'm not a big fan of the handle. I do love, 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 love the pour spout, so. First thing that got me when I run my hand across this and better than any of them was the finish they had on yes. it. You know, it was uh, like glass smooth. And that's how I know that a skillet is gonna perform well. Okay, but I'm gonna play devil's advocate here a little oh. bit. Um, do you feel that there is a big enough difference between the Stargazer at 88 and the Butter Pat at 195? Uh, not necessarily, no. And, I, and I'm not belittling these people or telling them that tell you that don't buy one. No, and, and that's the thing with Butter Pat is um, because there's not a machine involved, that's where you're getting the extra yeah. cost. Like I said, I would say this is the skillet for the collector, for somebody that's really hard to buy for. That's where that's where I think your butter pat market comes yep. in. I would give a maybe final recommendation. If you are new to cast iron, I would probably recommend either the Stargazer or the Field because they come with a really great um, pre-seasoning. A lot of people who are just new to cast iron don't understand how it works and how the seasoning works and they get frustrated. For more ease of use out of the beginning, I would maybe suggest one of those, would yeah. you say? The Lodge is a good one. Um, it's just the pre-seasoning is so rough. I wouldn't give that to somebody right out of the bat and say, here, this is what cast iron is like because yeah. you have to put a little more love into the Lodge. Remember what you're looking for, uh, but first of all, remember it's all made in the USA by hardworking people here. Yep, and, um, and so the biggest takeaway is there are all different styles of skillets, all different price ranges. We hope this helped you yeah. maybe find out what works best for you. Are you going to pick a favorite? Oh, like an overall favorite? That's what people have been asking me. I oh, wanted, they want an overall they favorite? They wanted a favorite, Shen. I would probably... Is it not me? You're always my favorite. Oh, and the man. I think I'd have to go with the field. Simple, light, 
and the handle is good. If I was saying that I had to go and buy one skillet, it would be a field. Yeah. But I haven't cooked with this skillet long, but I, I am really liking it. I think you're kind of, yeah, like as you have talked about it more and more, I think the stargazer is growing on you. We uh, thank y'all for stopping by the barn. Uh, thank you for your concern about my mustache. I was really, it was just heartwarming, all the sympathy and support that I got over it. Shannon. Somebody said like, ooh, that guy does a really good impression of Kent Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little series we did on cast iron. What do you do, Kent? You reach over there and you hit that subscribe button there you go. and you'll get there. God bless you each and every one. See you down the trail. Hey folks, y'all been asking for it, so we're going to give it to you. A side-by-side -side comparison of the butter path, the stargazer, the field, and lodge cast iron. You don't want to stick around. Oh, oh you, you don't want you to? You don't want I told you we should have went with the first one. <laughs> Dorky butt. <laughs> Please do not watch this video. Sorry. <laughs> okay.